Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Back again at the scene of the, was it sabotage or technician incompetence? In that service call, we realized that the compressor wasn't compressing anymore. In the Ream 4-ton system, 410A, with a manufacture date of 2015. Well, here we are again with the brand new compressor to replace it. In this video, I am gonna show you step-by-step step the methods I take to replace a compressor inside a condensing unit. Now, granted, this one is quite tall. Matter of fact, I'm standing on the floor and it is almost as tall as me. Now, if I stand up on the same platform, you're gonna see that this unit is almost Wow, about four feet tall, crazy, crazy. So stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to replace the compressor. Step one, disconnect power and verify there's no voltage. Number two, we are going to remove this panel here in its entirety. That way we can easily get to the compressor, which was all the way up in there. And if I was a midget, maybe then I would work in there, but I'm not vertically challenged, so we got the power off. I'm gonna start taking apart the panels here for full access. All right, to maximize use of time, while I'm disassembling the unit, we're gonna set up our recovery tank, the recovery machine, and the scale, and we're gonna hook up our gauges, refrigeration manifold gauges, to the service ports to help assist in fast removal of refrigerant we're going to remove the Schrader cores. All right, before I start recovering, I'm going to close the service valves, the King valves on the liquid side here. I'm doing right now, that's the 3 8 line, the liquid line, and also the suction line. This is the 7 8 In this particular case, it is 7 8 On smaller systems, it's 3 quarter. But we're going to close this. We're closing both valves. That way, I don't have to recover everything that's in the entire system you know the estimated 80 foot line set the evaporator that can all remain in place as long as these valves are functional and hold that way i'm only recovering what's in the compressor and the condensing coil okay nice and snug all right i have both schrader core tools installed the cores are removed put them off to the side I have my testo gauges now. It is gonna slow it down, the recovery process, by using a digital, uh, a manifold gauge. But I also wanna keep an eye on the pressures to see what's left, so it's a drawback. So I have my suction and my liquid line hooked up. My charging hose is going to my recovery machine. We're gonna loosen this up a little bit. All right, that stays closed, closed, closed. Loosen up a little bit. Now I'm just gonna open up my low side, my high side, and we're gonna crack this open and we're gonna purge any air out of the lines, the manifold, and the recovery machine. Yeah, a little bit discharged there, I got some oil there as well, as you can see. And we're gonna crack open this valve. Scale's on zero. Okay. Gonna let that suck in some of the pressure. And after a couple seconds, we're gonna hit the start button and start the recovery process. So we're already at one and a half pounds and we just turned it on. Let the pressure take advantage of a recovery tank that we vacuumed down the shop to around 500 microns before we got to the job. So I have a an empty recovery tank it's in a it's in a, um, a vacuum 500 microns and now we're going to start disassembling the rest of this machine we're going to pay very close attention to all the wiring because we're going to remove the top piece we're going to have to remove all this right here so let's get the show on the road all right for my condenser fan motor i have a yellow and blue this is my 24 volt this is an ecm uh condenser fan motor and that goes to both sides of the contactor my green is my ground, and my brown and my black is my line voltage. 
I'm gonna pull all those out through there. Like that. And now we're gonna take the whole entire condenser fan motor assembly and put it off to the side. Did we forget a screw there or something? There you go. Got it? Perfect. Air Force Nun's gonna manhandle that beast, put it off to the side. Now, we have capacitor to remain, contactor to remain, but I have to get this panel off of here so I can get inside there because, as you can see, we're all the way up in there. Oh, and I just cut my shirt. Mother effer. Mother effer. I gotta raise the bill by $27. You ever seen those, uh, those memes where it's like, oh, I need a napkin, and then they rip the dude's shirt off? <laughs> I need a napkin right now. I need a napkin. All right, now, I got my electrical panel off to the side. I got these bunch of wires here. One is going to a uh, the standby whole house generator staging switch. And the other one is my uh, wire, low voltage wire from my air handler thermostat. So that's out of the way there. Unplug the Copeland wiring harness from the compressor, and I removed the zip tie there. One of the things you want to look at, because again, I do this for a living, this is what I do, where wire meets copper, I see this often, the temperature differences, the temperatures there will kind of wear away the, the uh, plastic insulation on the wiring, and next thing you'll know, voltage will eat into that, and boom, you have a hole, and there goes the refrigerant charge. The compressor terminals look good, but we're gonna get Air Force Nun to get a socket set with the impact driver and get rid of the four bolts that are securing the compressor to the condenser base. All right, while Air Force Nun, AKA Christian Dyack, by the way, he is my son. You guys ask, is he my nephew? Is he, is, is he my bitch? Is he the, the shop steward? Yeah. It's all the above, all the above, ladies and gentlemen. But while Air Force Nun is unsecuring the compressor to the condenser base. Let me show you what kind of tools we're working with right now so you can have a good idea of the complexity involved and the, the tools required to actually do the job the right way and in a timely fashion. I got a lot here. This is my field piece. This is the 8CFM, the VP85. This is the vacuum pump. All right, I'm just gonna cover that up. You should keep those covered. You don't wanna, you don't wanna contaminate the oils there. I have a scale, which is now resting below the recovery tank. I got a recovery machine. I brought my kneeling pad in case I needed to kneel in there, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. I got my brazing rig. This is by Uniweld. All right, oxygen and acetylene. I got my Testo, refrigeration manifold box. And I have this cool little thing right here. This is by Eco Tools. This is the True Blue evacuation set with the Blue Vac Plus Micron gauge. All right. We also have just my Vito TPXL filled with tools. This is my service bag, which became my install bag as well. I have another Vito, the uh, Tech XL, and. Um, Whatever, this is my go-to bag. It weighs a lot less. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got going on so far. Pressures look non-existent. Looks like we got nine PSI remaining in there. We recovered so far 8.7 pounds, and it's 11 after 8 in the morning. We've been here for about 20 minutes or so, I would say. Okay, so all the bolts are removed, all four of them. One, two, three, four. We're gonna let this finish recovering, and then we're going to braze out these lines. And I think that says recovery complete. No, it says low pressure cutoff. No, actually it says complete too. Okay, recovery is complete. We removed our hoses from the service ports and we took out 8.2 pounds. That's minus the hose that was attached to it. So 8.2 pounds is a good number. Okay, next we're gonna take our brazing rig, which is right there, and we are gonna carefully with some PPE, <laughs> you can squint too for the same price, All right? We're gonna use some PPE, protective eyewear, when we unbraze these connections on the compressor. Wow. 
Watch your eyes in case it blows up. Look at the sun, I just realized that I am an effing idiot. I'm glad you realized it almost 50 years later. <laughs> I closed the service valves to isolate the condensing unit from the line set and the evaporator. But what I did was I isolated the condensing unit from the line set and the evaporator but there is still a charge inside the condensing unit. <laughs> oh, they're gonna get they're gonna rip me a new one with this one. All right, so we fixed that. Oops. And now we are going to. That didn't work out as planned. It didn't. Keeping it real. So we're gonna cut here and take a little bit of tubing and a, and a little forty-five and make that back up with the new compressor we'll clean out the bottom of this condensing unit with the debris and while air force none deadlifts that i don't know it's an 80 pound compressor Probably. yeah yeah you could deadlift that bitch mm -hmm. all right he's trying to manhandle that beast uh, you can do it <laughs> oh man, he's turning red. Damn. Make sure you stand it upright. Otherwise, the oils will spill. Have some spillage. All right, now I got my tubing cutter. I'm going to cut this back a little bit and make some modifications. Okay, did a little modification there. Had a little scare because my new compressor model number ending in 830 is different than the original one. So I had to call up MCN, verify that, but I cut back my damaged 7 8 put a little bend right there, and threw a little 45, street 45 in there. And right now I got my brazing rig ready to go. My nitrogen tank, we're hovering. We need to hover a little bit more closer to five. And let's give her a little more gas right there. Perfect. Right around there. Perfect. So we have a little bit of nitrogen flow flowing through the system, and that's going to prevent carbon buildup when I brace. Got a little bend on it. And now we're going to brace. I'm going to heat up the fitting. Oh, that's split a little bit. Slide that back in. We're gonna heat this up. And once it gets cherry red, I'm gonna apply some brazing rod to it. Very nice and solid. Very nice and solid. Now I gotta push this back in and work on the rest. Oh, 
I'm gonna get up in him. Okay, I only had one leak, and it was right there. I wiped off the fittings with a damp rag, and now we're gonna bolt the compressor to the condenser base. All right, now my compressor is secure to the base, and we're gonna reattach the compressor wire harness and we're going to secure it to the side and clean up a little bit more in here put the cover back on and start the vacuuming process all right panels back on vacuum hoses are hooked up the vacuum pump is on let's open up that one and that one Something just got fucked. All right. Looks like we had a little pressure in there. But now we're vacuuming down. Nine, 12. Let's see how long it takes to pump down. There's one thing I forgot to do, Christian. Filter dryer. Filter dryer. Damn, we're so close. I bet you a slim minority of the viewers who are watching me vacuum down with the existing filter dryer are like, yeah, look at Mikey Pipes, a.k.a. Hack. You know, look at him, the hack. Or they're screaming at you. They're yeah, there are haters out there. They're trolls. They hate me, by the way. They hate me. They will, if they could, they will take a stick and beat me to death with it because they're hating that much. Even though they're all degenerates and they live in a fucking trailer park. And they bang their stepsister. Ooh, stepsister. Yeah. The trolls know who I'm talking about. Most of them are already blocked, so you can comment all you want. But as Dua Lipa says, I don't give a fuck. A fuck. There's a filter dryer, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Get that money. Cha-ching. Now pay me. They be hating. They be hating. Eh, 1184, 1175 microns. We're getting there. Don't worry, we're getting there. We're getting it. Getting her done. Getting her done, Cletus. Cletus. No comment? No, you sound retarded. I sound retarded? I am retarded. Yeah. I am. It's like how I I thought, oh I'm gonna isolate the condenser and we're gonna we're gonna suck everything out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Not, Not gonna do it. If I would have, yeah, if I would have kept bracing that off, I'm like, oh, fuck. Then I really wish I had some PPE. Yeah. PPP, yeah, you know me. Probably wouldn't have had any eyeballs left. Probably not. Probably not. But I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. They're going to have to drag me out of here. All right. We vacuumed down to around 440 microns. Now I'm dumping the charge. First thing I noticed is that they've been using UV dye. See that? They've been using UV dye in the system, so I'm trying to just dump that charge, the recovery charge, back into the system. And we're going to fire up and see what happens. Let's close our valves. Okay, now keep that open. Let's turn the power on.
compressor. A good thing. First, we're gonna need to get the uh, 410A. We weren't compressing before, but now we're compressing. We're gonna fill this up, put back what we took out of it, and then check our uh, sub cooling pressure. All right, let's review the service call of this compressor replacement. We recovered what, 8.3 ounces? Oh yeah, 8.3 pounds. And that was in total. But she needed a lot more. And one of the things that we noticed when we were recharging the system is that there was dye present. And that means someone added ultraviolet dye because the system has leaks. Right? So more background history we don't know. The system needed a lot more than what I recovered. A lot more. A boatload more. Almost double what we took out. Almost double what we took out. And the reason for that is, if we look at the reading plate, this unit came with, where is it? 174 ounces of 410A. That's more than 10 pounds. More than 10 pounds. Fortunately now, she is discharging hot air. Oh, shut the front door. Right? We're condensing. She's beer can cold. Wanna feel it? She's beer can cold. But we tested, so we weren't guessing. We have around the nine and a half degrees of subcooling. I'm not too confident with my high pressure because she's over 350 PSI. And I think that maybe the UV dye and maybe some other contaminants that were in the system Maybe he's messing up their medium device. Who knows? But it is up and running right now. And hence, they'll get the season guarantee for the compressor. Now, this video was supposed to be a how-to guide on how to replace the compressor step-by-step. Step. Right? I made some mistakes along the way. Right? I closed the service valves, isolating the condenser from the rest of the system then recovered, figured that out. Then we were at 700, 600 microns, and then I realized, don't, I didn't replace the filter dryer. But nonetheless, Christian, what time is it? 10.33. It's time to go in the effing pool. Don't you know what time it is? Their pool? We're going their pool. Right, right behind us. Let's go check out their pool. We'll take the service entrance. <laughs> Cause that's where the hired help go, right? That's a servant entrance. Servant entrance. But I tell you, I would love to go down that that uh, that water slide. Does it have any water going to it though? The, the, Imagine yeah. that slide with no water. No, look, that see thing. the see the little pipe right there? Does it though? Yeah. See, there's the water pipe. Oh, and it's slightly dribbling. The little dribbles. Is it? A little bit of dribbles. Oh, okay, so it does have water. Got a nice diving board, and this is. You're right. It's you know it's pre-existing. Yeah. It's pre existing. It was grandfathered in. Yeah, wink, wink. Wink, wink. Christian, you know what time it is? <laughs> it's 36. All right, we're 63 and a half degrees She's out of this register. Let's check the amount. The amount of refrigerant that we put 64.1. 61.8 and dropping. Good home. But okay, the master bedroom. 59 degrees, 58.9. Well, so. right, but I mean, when you walk up the stairs, the top, top of the stairs, the foyer of the stairs Fantastic. is nice. Fantastic. You know, it's just that I noticed the difference when we walked into oh, this absolutely. wing of, of the house. Exactly. All right, 58.5. That's the original. Yeah, very little airflow here too, but so temperature is good. Temperature remains cool in the hallway, so overall. Like, um, if you, if you, I don't know if you know, but your air handler. All right, so. It is 11.20 in the morning. We probably spent about a half hour schmoozing with them, right? Just developing and building more relationships. And um, yeah, we're gonna be back here tomorrow doing some air balancing. Well, Daniel will be here tomorrow doing some air balancing uh, with some problematic areas of conditioned space on the second floor. Good stuff. So you saw the uncut, unedited, and raw, raw, Compressor replacement, you saw the mistakes I made, the corrections I 
and the steps I took to correct those mistakes. But at the end of the day, we replaced the compressor, got the customer up and running, and I gotta tell you, the guy was so thankful. Oh, yeah. He must have thanked us about a dozen times uh, between the course of this past morning. Thanking us just so much for the whole thanks for coming out and doing this. I really appreciate it. Like, and it really makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. What did I do wrong? What did I do right? What would you do better? And what? how can I improve as an HVAC technician? All right? Because you have to learn something new every day. Be humble. Don't be cocky. You know, take criticism, constructive criticism from others, and you'll only do that much better and succeed that much further in life. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. Thank you.